What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Young Legends Podcast, where we help you get the cheat codes to the game of life. I'm your host, Caption, aka Caption Red, and today's episode is about not taking things personally. Now, if you can master this important life skill and this life habit, it will change your life and make your life significantly better. Now, I'm going to reference a number of different things, including a very important book written by a guy named Don Miguel Ruiz, which is called The Four Agreements. And the book is about the four agreements that every person should make with themselves. Now, here's a direct quote from the book about not taking things personally. Whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. Nothing other people do is because of you. All people live in their own dream, in their own mind. They are completely in a different world from the one we live in. When we take something personally, we make the assumption that they know what is in our world and we try to impose our world onto their world. Now, this part of the book reminds me of a quote that goes, we judge ourselves by our intentions and we judge others by their actions. And that's true, right? You judge other people by what they do, but you judge yourself by what's in your head because you know what's in your head. You don't know what's in other people's minds. And because of that, all you can do is go by their actions. Now, in regards to taking things personally, a few years back, I met a guy at a networking event. He is a really successful real estate agent. And beyond being successful with real estate, he was also successful with his family. He was a pillar of the community. And he was just a really awesome, dynamic guy. So we're sitting there talking and we're jiving really well. And he's like, hey, man, here's my card. Let's grab lunch sometime. And in my head, I'm like, you want to get lunch with me? And I was like, yeah, totally. Let's grab lunch sometime. So the next day I sent him an email and I said, hey, great to meet you yesterday. I'd love to grab lunch. Just let me know when. A week goes by, no response. So after that, I send him a follow-up email and I say, hey, I know you're busy. Just let me know when you're free to get lunch. No response. So the third time I followed up with him, uh, I followed up through a window in his house while he was sleeping. Uh, I grabbed him by his collar in his bed and I said, why won't you respond to my emails, man? And now I do get to see him from time to time, but only 100 yards at a time, uh, according to court documents anyways. Now, I'm totally kidding, but I sent him a third email and I said, hey, let me know if you want to go grab lunch. If not, no worries. And so there was no response. And at that point, I, I started to feel bad about myself. I started to, to be like, oh man, this guy doesn't even want to get lunch with me. He was just talking. He didn't really like me. He didn't really mean any of that. Now, six months later, I run into him again. And when you see someone in public, you got to say, hey. So I went up to him. I said, hey, how's it going? And he's like, hey, how's it going, man? He's like, good to see you. By the way, I saw that you emailed me but I didn't read your emails. And here's why. My wife got into a really bad accident shortly after we met and she came close to passing away. And ever since then, all we've been doing is trying to get her back to health and trying to rehab her body. And I've just been focusing on my wife and the rest of my family. And because of that, I haven't been able to meet with anybody and I haven't been able to do anything else. And I looked at him and I said, hey, man, no worries, no worries whatsoever. I'm so sorry for what happened to your wife. And if you need anything from me, if I can do anything to help, please let me know. Now, here I am taking this thing personally that had nothing to do with me. And that's the thing. Most of the time, people had their own stuff going on and they bring their own issues and problems into a situation with you. Somebody might defriend you on Facebook because They don't want you to see what's going on in their lives. Maybe they're not doing well. Maybe they have stuff to hide. Sometimes people will unfollow you on Instagram or Snapchat because they're jealous of your life. Sometimes people might block you on Instagram or Snapchat because they don't want you to see what's happening with them. Now, sometimes people do block people and unfollow people because of something legitimate that you did. And if you know that you did something that upset them, of course you need to apologize. But here's the thing. People bring their own issues. There's this one really famous quote that goes, hurt people, hurt people. And that's true. People who have been hurt in their lives oftentimes operate that way because that's all they know. People who feel powerless sometimes will do things to make themselves feel powerful. People who have been wounded will go out and do the wounding. 
Now, there's a study that was done where different people read about a certain person, a fake person on paper, and they were asked to ride up an elevator after that. So while they're riding the elevator, they were either asked to hold a cup of warm coffee or a cup of cold coffee. And the people who held the warm coffee were more likely to have negative thoughts about the fictitious person as opposed to those people who held the cold coffee. Because that's what happens when people have something happen in their life, they might interact with you in a very warm or cold way. Now, I know I've had this happen in my own life where I was the person bringing something to an issue. One time I was having a bad day at work. I'm driving home. There's this guy standing in a parallel parking spot right next to my building. And I was just upset. I was like, what is he doing? And I drove by him and I said, hey, man, what are you doing standing in that parking spot? And he's like, hey, I'm the manager of the building next door and I have a maintenance truck coming. And I looked at him and I said, hey, man, you don't own the street. And then I looked at him, I drove down the street, and then I parked my car. Now, generally, I probably would have said something along those lines. But because I was having a bad day, even though I didn't know it, I was looking to take out some of my anger on somebody, and he just so happened to be in my path. So I went up to him, and I just started mouthing off to him. And then we just got into the shouting argument. And it got so heated between us that the police were called which I didn't even know until the next day. But that was me. That was me coming into a situation with my own issues. Now, people might mistreat you because you remind them of someone who hurt them. There are some people who hate men. And when they come across you, because you're a man or because you're a guy, they will mistreat you. And it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with what they've been through. Or some people will do that with women as well. And again, that has nothing to do with you but you're just interacting with all the issues that they're bringing. Also, it might just be the way they are. Some people are just rude people, and they do that with everybody. I remember reading an article where where this woman was mistreating her employees, and one of her employees went up to her and said, hey, we don't appreciate the way you're treating us. And then she looked at the employee, and she was like, hey, I'm too stressed out to be nice to people. And, And there goes that issue again. It had nothing to do with them. It had everything to do with what she was going through. Now I'm going to jump back into quoting the book where Don Miguel Ruiz says, the whole world can gossip about you. And if you don't take it personally, you are immune. Someone can intentionally send emotional poison. And if you don't take it personally, you will not eat it. When you don't take the emotional poison, it will become worse for the sender, but not in you. Now, this whole statement reminds me of a quote that says, if you live for other people's acceptance, you'll die from their rejection. And that's a good one. It's something that you should think about. Don't let other people determine your worth or make you feel like you're less than. All right, back to quoting the four agreements. Even when the situation seems so personal, even if others insult you directly, it has nothing to do with you. Now, can you stand up for yourself? Of course you can. But Standing up for yourself and taking something personally are two completely different things. You can stand up for yourself and still not take something personally. That's a different conversation because taking things personally is what happens inside of you and inside of your head. All right, back to quoting Don Miguel Ruiz. Taking things personally makes you easy prey for these predators, the black magicians. They can hook you easily with one little opinion and feed you whatever poison they want, and because you take it personally, you eat it up. Why would you eat poison? Now, I don't know if you're a big basketball fan, but I'm a really big basketball fan, and I love the NBA, and that's what a lot of these players do. They say things, they do things to try to get in the heads of the other players, and sometimes the other players take the bait, and then they let them get into their heads, and The reason why they do this is because they want to win a basketball game. And when the players allow them to get in their heads, they are playing right into their hand and allowing them to do exactly what they want to do and causing their team to lose and the other team to win. And that's why you shouldn't eat up people's poison. All right, back to the quote. But if you do not take it personally, you are immune in the middle of hell. Immunity in the middle of hell is a gift of this agreement. Now, when Prince first started, he opened up for the Rolling Stones. I think this was back in 1981. And when he went out on stage, the Rolling Stones fans didn't know who he was. And so they started booing him. They started throwing trash at him. And he couldn't perform. 
That night, the Rolling Stones got with Prince and they said, hey, we're so sorry for our fans. Please come open for us tomorrow. We promise it won't happen again. So he goes out on stage and guess what happens? They start booing him and they start throwing trash at him. Now, at that moment, I don't know what was going through Prince's head, but if he did not take that personally, he would literally be standing in the middle of hell and he would be immune from it. And that's the power of not taking things personally. So here's the deal. Here's the secret. Just do you and do what makes you happy. Some people are going to like you. Some people won't. And that's not something that you have a lot of control over. So just live your life. Now, I don't know if you watched The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but it's one of my favorite shows from my childhood. And there's this one episode where Will's father comes back into his life after abandoning him. And Will's all pumped up and he's so happy. And they start making plans to go on a trip together. And then his dad starts to back out and he just starts to abandon Will again. And Will is crushed by it. And here's the deal. He shouldn't have been crushed by it because that was an issue of his father, not his issue. Will was allowing his father to determine his worth when he shouldn't have. And here's the thing. His father even said in the episode, he said, hey, I left my family because I was scared and I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know how to raise a family. And so I left. And that was his own issue. Now, when men leave their families, them leaving their families has nothing to do with the value of their family, has nothing to do with the value of those children. And yeah, being a father is difficult. Being a mother is difficult. It is scary. You are responsible for another human being. But if his father had the right frame of mind, he would look at his son and he would say, this is an absolute sacred honor to raise a family, to raise a child. And because of that, I will face my fears and I will, I will raise this child to the best of my ability and I, will, and I will love this child. But because his father chose to be a coward and chose to give in to his fears, Will's life was difficult. Now, sometimes you take things personally and you're misinterpreting the situation. One time I was at this place that is a lot like Dave & Buster's. They have a lot of games and big screen TVs to watch sports. And so I was watching an NBA basketball game and there was this guy across the way from me, about 10, 15 feet. And I didn't know that I needed glasses at the time, but I needed glasses at the time. So I was sitting there looking at him and he looked a lot like this guy I played basketball with that previous weekend. And I was staring at him and I was like, is that the guy? Is that not the guy? I'm not sure. And in my head, I was like, should I go say hey to him? And he sees me staring at him and he looks at me. He goes, hey, man, what are you looking at? You got a problem? And I was like, no, 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 no. I have no problems whatsoever, dude. You look like someone I played basketball with last week. I was just trying to figure out if you were him or not. And then he felt bad and he's like, hey, sorry. Uh, And everything was cool. Now, here he was misinterpreting what I was doing. I was thinking he might be a friend, and he was thinking I was just staring him down like he was nobody. And because of that, he got all offended and he took it personally. Now, here's the thing. People might think bad things about you based on a false assumption of who you are, what you've done, and so on and so forth. And because of that, they treat you a certain way, and that certain way isn't even based on the truth. And sometimes the misinterpretation is on your side. Sometimes you're the guy being stared at thinking that this person is trying to mistreat you and thinks nothing of you when that is not the case whatsoever. Now, I'm going to quote a quote I really like, which is, don't believe everything you think. I'm going to say it again. Don't believe everything you think. Oftentimes, we think things that aren't true, and if we believe them, they paint our reality, which is not actually reality. And another thing, there are just some people who are trolls and you got to delete the trolls. When I do a live cast show on the podcast and they say all sorts of things and they're just trolls. And just like I can delete the trolls on the live cast, you can delete the trolls in your life, whether you remove them from your life or you just choose not to listen to what they have to say. And honestly, you just have to be too busy to care. You got things to do. You have loved ones to care for. You have goals to achieve. You have stuff you got to do and you have to dare to live fully. You have to fill up your calendar full of stuff so that you have so much going on. You don't have time to think about these people and their opinions. Here's the thing about all of this. Not taking things personally requires discipline. 
It takes time to develop, and it takes practice. But if you practice it, you will become better at it. Just like if you practice anything, you'll become better at it, whether it's yoga or basketball or painting or anything else. But you have to be disciplined. You have to practice the habit of not taking things personally. Now, as I was doing research on this topic, I read an article by a guy named Jordan Harbinger, who is a really successful podcaster, a blogger, and he does a bunch of other stuff. And he said in his blog, you have to take the right things personally. And that's true. You, there are certain things you have to take personally because you have to take responsibility for certain things in your life. And as you take responsibility for those things in your life, know that it's not about condemnation, but it's about conviction. Here's the difference between the two. Condemnation is like, hey, you're a bad person. You are not a good person. You are evil. You are all those labels that you want to throw on someone who is bad, quote unquote. But conviction, conviction is a different idea, which is, hey, I see that I'm doing something wrong or I see that I'm not living up to what I can do and now I'm going to change. That's a completely different thing than you're a very bad person. Now, here are some of the questions that Jordan Harbinger said to ask yourself. How much influence do I have over this person, event, decision, or relationship? Now, when it comes to family relationships, you might have a big influence on them and you have to take the responsibility to make sure that you are influencing that person or that relationship really well. Here's another question. What can I do to make sure that this person, event, decision, relationship unfolds as productively and peacefully as possible? Yeah, you have to make sure that you are taking responsibility, that events that you are responsible for come out as well as they possibly can, that relationships come out as well as they possibly can. Here's another question. In a world where I can't be responsible for everything at once, which aspects of my life require the most of my time and energy? Certain parts of your life require a lot of time and energy. If you're in school, your studies require a lot of time and energy. If you run a side business, if in regards to your family members, in regards to relationships, best friends, those do require time and energy and you have to make sure that you are prioritizing those things. And here's another thing that's kind of related, which is to balance yourself with feedback. Because there are certain people in your life that will give you feedback and all they want to do is see you succeed. All they want to do is see you become your best. So those people, even though you don't take what they say personally, you should listen to those people as long as they're right, which is sometimes difficult to decipher. But listen to feedback. There's this uh, stand-up comedian who's a local Atlanta guy, and I heard him tell this joke, and it was really spot on with that. He said, I'm tired of people talking about their haters. Oh, man, I'm sick of all my haters just, just trying to tear me down, hating on me, plotting my downfall. He's like, what do you mean haters? What haters do you have? You're 24 years old, you still live at home, and you work at Target. Those aren't haters. Those are your parents. They're trying to make you better. It was really funny the way he delivered it, and he was just really spot on and had the audience rolling. But that's true. You do have people who are trying to see you get better and want to see you become your best, and you do need to be mindful to listen to them. All right, so that's the end of the episode, but I do want you to know that you are somebody who is important. You are somebody who deserves to be happy. You are somebody who has something to offer the world, and if you learn to not take things personally, your life will become significantly better and it will increase your happiness, your success, and create many other positive things in your life. All right, so that's all I got. If you enjoyed this message, please share it with somebody who needs to hear it. And if you need anything from me, please reach out to me on Instagram, Young Legends Podcast. And I hope you're well wherever you are. And until next time, peace out.